Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So I face a challenging day before He take me away behind to the grind. Success on my mind. Good morning, me neighbor. Good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you. Blessed rising and good morning to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is the fourth day of November, and it's a beautiful day here in Nangriga, west southwest. There is some gray skies, and to my east, there is an orange sun. We had some scattered showers this morning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh -huh, practicing to be a meteorologist we had some scattered showers this morning somewhere around four and a little bit again after five o'clock i do pray that you are safe and sound where you are this morning it is believe it or not a friday morning i don't know where and when the week disappeared but we are here on friday praise god we're going to kick things off this wonderful Friday morning with one entitled Blessed Jesus at Thy Word. Let's have a listen. I 
A beautiful one there entitled, Blessed Jesus at Thy Name. We're going to continue then getting our words here up on screen for today, November the 4th in 2022. And let's see if I could make that happen without any incident in 3, 2, and 1. There we go. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Words from Habakkuk chapter 20, verse 20. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 35 using versicle 1. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the Canticle de Venite, which is found on page 36 in our Books of Common Prayer and is based on Psalm 95 verses 1 to 8. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph for the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. Thus he is his and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to call to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we may have committed that may have been displeasing to Almighty God, that may have been unjust to our neighbors, or perhaps was unkind even to our very selves. For those times and those moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we have the reading of our psalm, and our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm number 69, <clears throat> pardon me, number 69, verses 1 to 23, and 31 through to 38. Let's have a listen. Psalm 69, verses 1 to 23, 31 to 38. Save me, O God, for the waters have risen up to my neck. 
I am sinking in deep mire and there is no firm ground for my feet. I have come into deep waters and the torrent washes over me. I have grown weary with my crying. My throat is inflamed. My eyes have failed from looking for my God. Those who hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. My lying foes who would destroy me are mighty. Must I then give back what I never stole? Oh God, you know my foolishness and my faults are not hidden from you. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me, Lord God of hosts. Let not those who seek you be disgraced because of me, O God of Israel. Surely, for your sake, have I suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred and alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you at the time you have set, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me. Neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift to answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. You know my reproach, my shame, and my dishonor. My adversaries, are all in your sight. Reproach has broken my heart and it cannot be healed. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but I could find no one. They gave me gall to eat, and when I was thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. As for me, I am afflicted and in pain. Your help, O oh God, will lift me up on high. I will sing the praise, the name of God in song. I will proclaim his greatness with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an offering of oxen, more than bullocks with horns and hoofs. The afflicted shall see and be glad. You who seek God, your heart shall live. For the Lord listens to the needy, and his prisoners he does not despise. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the sea and all that moves in them. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. They shall live there and have it in possession. The children of his servants will inherit it, and those who love his name will dwell therein. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, 
is now and will be forever. Amen. Our second canticle, well, our Bible lesson for this morning comes from the book of Sirach. Sirach chapter 50, verse 1, and then 11 to 24. Let's have a listen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Sirach, chapter 50, verse 1, and then verse 11 to 24. The leader of his brothers and the pride of his people was the high priest, Simon, son of Onias, who in his life repaired the house and in his time fortified the temple. When he put on his glorious robe and clothed himself in perfect splendor, when he went up to the holy altar, he made the court of the sanctuary glorious. When he received the portions from the hands of the priests, as he stood by the heart of the altar with a garland of brothers around him, he was like a young cedar of Lebanon, surrounded by the trunk of palm trees. All the sons of Aaron, in their splendor, held the Lord's offerings in their hands before the whole congregation of Israel. Finishing the service at the altar and arranging the offerings to the Most High, the Almighty, he held out his hand for the cup and poured a drink offering of the blood of the grape. He poured it out at the foot of the altar, a pleasing odor to the Most High, the King of all. Then the sons of Aaron shouted, they blew their trumpets of hammered metal. They sounded a mighty fanfare as a reminder before the Most High. Then all the people together quickly fell to the ground on their faces to worship their Lord, the Almighty God Most High. Then the singers praised him with their voices in sweet and full tone melody. And the people of the Lord Most High offered their prayers before the merciful one, until the order of worship of the Lord was ended and they completed his ritual. Then Simon came down and raised his hands over the whole congregation of Israelites to pronounce the blessing of the Lord with his lips and to glory in his name. And they bowed down in worship a second time to receive the blessing from the Most High. And now, Bless the God of all, who everywhere works great wonders, who fosters our growth from birth and deals with us according to his mercy. May he give us gladness of heart, and may there be peace in our days in Israel as in the days of old. May he entrust to us his mercy, and may he deliver us in our day. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you allow me a few seconds to get back to the beginning of our reading for this morning, you would have noticed that I left out the second canticle. I am practicing. In the next few weeks, I have Provincial Synod, and it begins at 7 a.m. every morning. And so I'm going through a process of seeing what I could actually cut down on in order to be able to be out in time to grab something to eat before I go into that 7 a.m. meeting because it runs from 7 a.m. until 3 p.m. virtually. Mm -hmm. So I'm beginning to switch it up just a little bit to see what we can do. There we have the Bible reading from Sirach chapter 50 verse 1 and then verse 11 to 54. And <clears throat> pardon me, the last time we were together we looked at, that was yesterday, we looked at Sirach 44 and Sirach 44 was all about remembering the heroes of Israel's past. And Sirach 45 goes right into that, talking about Moses and then talking about Aaron, talking about Phinehas, who was the son of Eleazar, who was renowned for his reverence of the Lord and who made atonement for Israel. And you could find Phinehas in Numbers chapter 25. And then chapter 46 and most of this from chapter 44 straight to chapter 50 is looking at the leadership of Israel at the time and 
how the leadership was one that is supposed to be remembered because of the quality of leadership they had. So chapter 46 goes into Joshua and talks about how he was a mighty warrior and that he put Israel in possession of the promised land. And in last week's Bible study, we would have heard about Rahab <clears throat> who guarded the two spies. And of course, we know that after Joshua, then came the judges, the period of the judges and Samuel. Yes, and we were supposed to be looking at last evening in, in Bible study. We were supposed to be looking at Hannah as a woman um, of the Bible, one of the beauties of the Bible. And Hannah, of course, would have had a son whose name was Samuel, who then Samuel, of course, became one of the greatest prophets of Israel. And he, of course, established the monarchy after the period of Judges when he anointed David to be king. And chapter 47, of course, talks about David, who was God's chosen king, and some of the difficulties that David had to endure under King Saul, mm -hmm. and how David, of course, even though he was not perfect in any way, still was a man who lived for the covenant of the Lord. And then, of course, chapter 47 speaks about David's son, Solomon, the wise man who built the temple and was renowned for his for his wisdom. And of course, because of Solomon's love of women, because Solomon had a lot of wives and concubines, he also brought a lot of idolatry into Israel through his foreign wives. Yes. And then, of course, as a punishment, you could say, for Solomon's idolatry, there comes the division of the kingdom. So after Sod Solomon's death, his sons, because of his plenty, plenty wives, his sons will divide the nations and 10 tribes will go north to set up their own kingdom and two tribes will go south to set up their kingdom. Because remember, there's 12 tribes of Judah. And of course, this is when um, Rehoboam, Solomon's son, begins an oppressive reign over his people. And then during this oppressive reign, two prophets arise. Well, a prophet and his understudy in chapter 48 of Sirach, you will find Elijah and Elisha. And of course, Elijah struggled against the apostasy of the northern kings. And he was preaching to those people, telling them, because remember, the ten that moved not did not stick to the principles of God in as much as the two who moved south stuck to the teachings of God. And Elijah struggled to prophesy to the northern kings. And after him, Elisha, would, who was full, filled with the prophet of the, the prophet, who was filled with the spirit of Elijah, then continued his work afterwards. And of course, chapter 48 of Sirach will cause us to see the destruction of the northern kingdom. Because why? They wouldn't repent. So they were scattered. They were destroyed. They were taken into captivity. And of course, in chapter 48, there is also the talking about the remembrance of one who brought redemption, the good works of Hezekiah and Josiah. And of course, Hezekiah prayed for deliverance and Josiah instituted many temple reform. Both of them, Sirach is saying, is worthy of praise because they were loyal to the Lord and therefore delivered his people. And then that brings us to chapter 49, where the destruction of Jerusalem happens. Yes, and it happens because all the other kings, except David, Hezekiah, and Josiah, were found guilty in the sight of God. They surrounded their power, they surrendered their powers to others and gave their glory to foreign gods and therefore were overtaken by foreign nations. And then comes on the scene in chapter 49, um, of Sirach, he remembers then how the prophets had to come in and rebuild Jerusalem and the prophets had to rescue the people who still had hope in God and that there were several prophets who were instrumental in the rebuilding of Jerusalem. And one of the prophets who was also a high priest who came on the scene, we find here in Sirach chapter 50 and that is Simon the high priest. And Simon was the high priest in the time of Ben Sirach who is believed to be the author of this book, Sirach. And he was responsible for temple operations as well as for the defense of Jerusalem. And Ben Sira recalls and remembers him because he carried out his duties faithfully. Yes, and here you see some of the things that are listed there. The leader of his brother and the pride of his people 
is how Ben Siva refers to him, which means that he, Simon, son of Onias, yes, is one that was revered because of his faithfulness to God and his willingness to do what is right in the sight of God's people. And it is interesting because, hmm, listen to what Simon is like. He puts on his glorious robe. He clothes himself in perfect splendor. Yes, he goes up to the altar and he makes the court of the sanctuary glorious. So this man clearly was doing what was right in the sight of God, but also in the sight of people. And he must have been a humble man to receive such honor, but he also was a man that was committed to making sure the things of the Lord was done properly. Yes, in Simon's life, Ben Sira tells us, he repaired the house of God. He fortified the temple worship. Yes, and how did he do it? He did it by following the practices and precepts that were set out according to God's law. Now, let me tell you, there is nothing more beautiful to me, yes, than a person who is seeking to serve God in a role within the church that wears a robe, yes? And when you see someone in a robe, be it a choir member, be it an acolyte, be it a lay minister, be it a deacon, be it a priest, be it a bishop, yes? I don't look for fancy lace and gold trimmings. I look for someone who is well put together, even in the humblest of robes without any decoration, but who has taken the time to present themselves with care and reverence and respect for what they are doing. You see, you could come with the most expensive robe from C.K. Almy. Yes? You could come with the most expensive robe. And if you show it on and don't put it on and don't carry yourself in it as if though it is worthy of anything, it don't matter how expensive your robes are. Yeah? You could put on a robe that your neighbor across the way sew out of regular brown cotton cloth with no fancy lace and no fancy embroidery. And if you put it on, but you wear it with reverence and respect, recognizing that the robe is not important, but the service that you are blessed to be able to carry out while you are wearing that robe, that is what makes you splendid that is the beauty and the splendor of what it is all about to serve god not the fanciness of the robe but how you carry yourself in order to keep the altar holy and to bless and maintain and keep glorious the sanctuary of god that's it you know and i always chuckle when people say well, I want more responsibility in the church. And I want people to want responsibility in the church. But I hope that they know that more responsibility in the church means that they have to come with more accountability in the church and towards the church people. You can't just want to wear the thing because you think the thing brings prestige. A life of service to God is a life of service to others. And service doesn't always come with prestige. Service doesn't always come with honor. Service doesn't always come with thanks. But service always comes with blessing. That's it. <laughs> if you're looking for people to sing your praises, you're going into service with the wrong intention. And it's interesting because a lot of the time, People think that leadership is about telling people what to do and they don't understand that leadership is about listening to what people are telling you needs to be done. I don't know. Ben Sira says that Simon was a good leader, that when he received the portion from the hands of the priest, he stood by the heart of the altar with the men around him and he finished the service in a remarkable manner. That his sacrifice was offered before God with humility and sincerity. And his sincerity 
caused the sons of Aaron and the men who were there to respect and honor God, to worship him. It says it sounded a mighty fanfare as a reminder before the Lord. And let me tell you, when the leadership follows God, the assistant leaders will follow the same leadership of God that is given as an example by the leaders and the people will follow the assistant leaders in following God. You see, it's not about the people following the leader. It's about everybody following God. That's it. And Simon did a good job of leading the sons, um, the, the assistants, and the assistants in giving their glory to God influenced the people to fall on their faces and worship the Lord Almighty, the God Mosai. And that's the thing. I never want... Yes, I never want anybody to do anything because Reverend Barbara say. And if they do something because Reverend Barbara say, I pray that Reverend Barbara is saying what God says. To lead means to follow as closely as you can the examples and the teachings of Christ. That as you lead, what you point to is not self, but to the God that you follow. That others can follow him and not follow you. I don't want nobody follow me. They follow me, they're going to get in trouble because I don't always get it right. But I try to point people to him who is perfect and gets it right 100% of the time. That together we can follow behind him. And Ben Sira is saying, of the men of Israel during his time, this Simon was one such man. He led the leadership of his community with good character. They, in turn, influenced the people to be able to not be afraid, to be in good relationships with God. Tells us that the people in worship sing the praises of God, offered prayers to him until the order of worship was ended and they completed their ritual. It tells us that this Simon, yes, that this Simon was one who did great things, you know, and he pronounces a blessing over his people, to which the people, again, you notice, when he blesses the people, yes, he doesn't get the praise for blessing them. The people bow down and worship to God a second time, because they realize that the blessings come from the Most High. He seemed to be a responsible fellow in carrying out his temple operations. He seems to be a responsible fellow in terms of the defense of Jerusalem, carrying out his duties faithfully. Yeah? And that the mercy of God found the people because Simon was true to God. And Later on, and we're not going to look at it, but later on, of course, yes, three nations are going to be detested. The Edomites, the Philistines, and the Samaritans because they refuse to turn towards God. But God's mercy dwelled with Israel, at least at, towards the ending of ben Sirach, Because, of course, the book of Sirach is going to finish in chapter 51 which is, of course, in the autobiographical notes and then identifying himself by name, a psalm of thanksgiving, and then Ben Sira describing why his words should be heeded. So in his writings, of course, Ben Sira manages to combine secular wisdom and biblical wisdom together. You know, he dedicates himself and his writing to a life and a belief that the kingdom of God will reign forever and that we who are alive should strive to further the kingdom of God and live according to God's covenant and his most holy law. And I hope that you take some time to read some stuff out of Ben Sirah from well, some of the writing of Ben Sirah in the book of Sirach. And again, it is found in the Apocrypha, so some Bibles might not have it. But Auntie Google, she has everything. You could Google the book of Sirach and you'll be able to find it. 
as we close off the book of Sirach, we remember and acknowledge that the writings of his wisdom, yes, the wisdom in his writings, sorry, are meant to guide us through our days in terms of our relationship with Christ. I want to be like Simon, boy. I don't want to just look the part. I want to live the part. <laughs> Amen. Let's continue then with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and blood of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage A. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Our first collect for this morning is the collect for Papa 26. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that me may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Together we say, a prayer for the poor and neglected. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn to our prayers of personal intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday today is Mrs. Anna Brackett, Miss Michelle Elliott, Mr. Richard Webster, Miss Meredith Marin, and Miss Victoria Wallace. Celebrating a birthday was Miss Lisa Langford, Mr. Shell Brandon Thompson, Mr. Moshe Smith, and Miss Charity Garden. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you will have a blessed and beautiful birthday, and that indeed God's blessings continue to be upon you, not just for today but for all the remaining days of your lives. Happy birthday! We continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, and Miss Mary. We pray for Miss Susanna, Miss Kimberly, Miss Monica, Miss Sylvia, Miss Des, Miss Aislin, 
Miss Justine, Miss Lisa, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, and Miss Janet. We remember and pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Florence, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Leslie, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, and Miss Venantia. We pray for Miss Betty, Miss Marta, Miss Marva, Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss LaShawn, Miss Altia, and Miss Teresa. We pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Helen, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlet, Miss Yolanda, Miss Janice, and Miss Glenda. We pray for Miss Laverne, Miss Mona, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Delvarine, Miss Doreen, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle, and Miss Joyce. We pray for Miss Kim, Miss Derla, Miss Molly, Miss Amy, Miss Jean, Miss Gladys, Miss Ismay, and Miss Elva. In our prayers, we pray for Miss Verolyn, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alaire, Miss Marilyn, Miss Leonor. Miss Brenda G, Miss Elena, Miss Louise, Miss Rita, Miss Lisa, Miss Nina, and Miss Joan. We pray for Miss Fiona, Miss Catherine, Miss Kelia, Miss Velina, Reverend Ilona, Miss Sharon, Miss Carolyn, Miss Gretel, Miss Sandra, Miss Bernadine, Miss Laverne, and Miss Tanisha. We pray for Miss Sheila, Miss Pat, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Ulichi, Miss Brenda S, Miss Dominic, Michelle Madin, Miss Robin. Reverend Linda, Miss Jean, and Miss Perla. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the following of our brothers. We remember and pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, and Bishop Nicasio. We remember and pray for Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Edmundo, and Mr. Ian. We pray for Mr. Dudley, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ishmael, Father Jerry's, Mr. Walter, Father Constancio, and Mr. Belhem. We remember and pray for Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Mr. Michael Griffith, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, Mr. Clinton, Father Leroy, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Lyndon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Brindell, and Mr. Lewis. We continue in our prayers to remember and pray for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, for those who recently laid a loved one to rest, and all those who are preparing to lay a loved one to rest. We remember and pray for Bishop Claude Berkeley on the passing and burial of his wife, Miss Dawn Berkeley. We remember the family of Mr. Teresa Garcia. We remember the family of Miss Lori Arzu, the family of Baby Zayden Villanueva, the family of Mr. Basil Coleman. We pray for God's comfort and peace to be upon all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, and we pray for eternal rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for our loved ones who are far away from us, praying for God's protection over them. We remember and pray for our students, praying for Tammy, Anwa, Karina, Courtney, Akua, Marissa, Ashley, Ria, Kai, Elton, Arian, Rihanna, Angela, and Angel and Garrett. We remember our loved ones in the military, praying for Emil, Jade. Gavin, Prince, Charles, Barry, Sam, Kishen, and Alvin. We continue to remember and pray for the enablement and protection of our medical professionals. We remember and pray for our doctors, remembering especially Drs. Molina, Manzanero, Shogreen, Arnold, Arana, Joseph, Eck, Lawrence, Sosa, and Koyal. We pray for all our nurses, praying for and remembering Nurse McKin, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Orel, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Joycelyn, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Julie, and Nurse Ashley. We remember and pray for all who work in our medical department, both in public and private institution, praying for God's protection and provision for them as they carry out their service to Him through the service of others. We continue to remember and pray for persons who are infected with COVID-19, persons in the various form of isolation, 
persons who care for those in isolation. We give God thanks for the availability of a vaccine and we pray for a cure, containment, and eventually elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. We pray for persons who would have lost employment, persons whose salaries would have been reduced, all who are struggling financially to make ends meet. We remember and pray for the poor, the needy, the elderly, all those who are most vulnerable in our society, those facing mental health challenges, drug addiction problems, those who are finding themselves in positions of physical, verbal, or emotional abuse of, or any kind of abuse. We pray for God's protection and provision upon them. We remember and continue to pray for our security forces this morning, for our emergency responders, for our government, our prime minister, our governor general, the leader of the opposition, all our members of parliament and members of government, for our ambassadors and all who exercise their authority in the interests of public well-being. We pray for our churches and our church leadership. We pray for the private sector, for all non-governmental organizations and all who are involved in the fight against COVID-19 or in any form of humanitarian aid. We remember in our prayers this morning the members of the international community, those affected by the pandemic, those affected by the ravages of hurricane or natural disaster, those affected by the effects of war, violence, and crime. We remember and pray for our own selves and our community, our country, and those who are in the process of recovering from this natural disaster. We remember the people in Mexico and Guatemala who suffered recent earthquakes. We pray for our own people here in Belize, those who are still without electricity and water. We pray for those who might be without these amenities and have those who are sick or small children among them. We pray for God's peace, God's kindness to rise up in the hearts of each one who is able to help in a time of need. May God's Spirit help us to not only be mindful but also responsive to the needs of those less fortunate than ourselves. We continue to pray for protection over ourselves and our region against the ravages of natural disaster. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together, Almighty and Eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is always indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in the presence of Almighty God, as well as to greet each new day in your presence as well. Last evening, we had a small online prayer Thanksgiving service um, for the sparing of the lives of all who were in the path of Hurricane Lisa here in Belize and we acknowledge that there is work to do with regards to restoration and we acknowledge that there was sadness over the loss of property but we gave thanks for the fact that God spared lives and that we have help and the opportunities to rebuild those things that we have lost. It was um, a difficult prayer service and we knew that there would have been a far more people in there had people started to return to maybe a semblance of normalcy. Again, we continue to pray for and remember those persons who are still without electricity, who are still without water, who are running low on supplies, perhaps who are running low on, on patience and, and courage to continue through this time. 
We pray for God's grace and God's peace and strength to continue to be upon you as you go through this rebuilding and recovery process. We pray for those of us who might not believe that we have anything that we could offer to help. But believe me, even if it is moral support for someone who is going through something hard, know that your life is only in vain if you do not use it to the service of others. Mm -hmm. A kind word, a small something, some some water even, you know. We are hoping that we could soon begin with our um, assistance to those in the affected areas in terms of providing, if not groceries, because some people might not have the ability to cook even. Listen, when your roof blow off, everything in your house get wet, you know. And lots of it, when it's wet, will not work. No stove, no fridge, no TV, no nothing. If you moved it up high to keep it from the water on the ground, but the roof blow off, it means that the water from above probably damage it. So sending groceries is one thing. Taking groceries to an organization that could cook warm meals to give out to people or providing water that people could drink, that's a completely different thing altogether. Hmm? So... We continue to pray that the hearts of those who have an opportunity to be of assistance will be softened in order that we could help in the restoration of our people. We continue to remember and pray for you all, yes. Um, as a reminder, we continue with our online services. Mm -hmm. Following this, we have noonday prayer at midday, evening prayer at 5.30 and compline at 9.00. PM. We invite you to join us if you are able. And for those of our friends who do not have internet but and can't be a part of our morning service, I had about three people messaging me this morning to tell me, Rev, sorry I won't be able to make it because my phone is on life support. We don't have enough battery left in there. To which I responded, thank you for letting me know you are okay. Please save a little bit of battery you have for the cases of emergency. Know that the recordings of morning prayer will always be there. And it is touching to, to, to read the messages because it's almost as if though they feel they are disappointing me by not being here. But my Lord, let me tell you, you being here is a blessing for me. You not being here because you cannot be here will never be a disappointment. It will only be an opportunity for me to pray that all continues to go well with you. Ah, the Father knows. The Father knows. And we just pray that he continues to watch over, protect and provide for all of you. Mm. Mm -hmm. We're going to wrap up this morning with our prayers of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our parts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons. In the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the grace of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just before we get into our closing hymn, which is one entitled, Bless the Lord, My Soul. I said something to somebody last evening. Yes. Um, if you have electricity at your house and you know there are people a few blocks away or people from your workplace that still don't have electricity, help them now. Allow them to come and charge the phone at your house. Or if you have a car and live in an area where there is still no electricity, you know most of the cars come with the USB thing. Help somebody to, to charge the phone through that. You know? If it's a little bit of charge, because you see, what I think about is relatives not being able to reach each other because there is no electricity or no proper communication. You know? My first question to somebody would be, have you contacted your loved ones? Do they know you are okay? When last you speak to? Hmm? It might seem like a small gesture. But it's a big thing for people to know that their loved ones are okay. 
We got to look out for each other, people. And to those persons out there who might not ever see this broadcast, but to those out there who are taking advantage of this situation to steal from other people, know that God ain't blind and that he's a God of justice. We pray that God will turn your heart away from the wickedness that you might be conjuring up in it. We rebuke whatever temptation the devil might be sending your way. Now is not a time to be taking advantage of people. It is the time for us to be banding together in unity and in love. Please continue to do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until Monday morning. Same place, same time. A closing hymn. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. God bless you. And bye for now. His grace to me proclaim, and all that is within me be joined to bless His holy name. Oh, bless the Lord my soul, His mercies bear in mind. Forget not all His benefits, the Lord to thee is kind. He clothes us with His love, upholds us with His truth. He heals all our infirmities and ransoms us from death. Then bless His holy name. Whose grace has made us whole, whose loving kindness crowns our days, for oh, bless the Lord my soul. Good morning. Me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful it's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you Lord For another day Every day I open my eyes I see morning light, morning light I know that the Lord just brought me through the night Through the night So I face a challenging day Before he take me away behind to the grind Success on me This wonderful morning It's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you Lord For another Another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you